Um, I, I didn't read through the whole curriculum. <laughs> so I, I kind of picked and cho chose uh, different uh, sections to, to look at. Um, as far as I could see, the only uh, thing I could find on, online was I think the student ver uh, version, which doesn't fill in um, everything. Uh, it's a bit different for the teachers. Maybe I was just clicking around the wrong spots. Anyway, oh. then I just didn't know what I was doing. Yeah, <laughs> we're causing controversy here. So, um, but I, I did in, enjoy a lot of uh, of what I saw um, it, in in the associate position that I I had. My two of my main roles um, were this leadership development program that I talked about, which teaches does some has a theological education component, and then um, we did a, a, a similar uh, discipleship. Um, curriculum that structured a, a little bit differently, but I saw a lot of uh, similarities between the work that we've done and, and what um, Rob and you guys have set up. Well, I don't. Uh, that's that's different. There's some seafood that I, that I don't like, but I did, I I do also eat seafood. Um, you do have to overcome it. If you grow up, see, you have to understand that the culture I grew up in, there was only one type of seafood, and that's prairie oysters, um, <laughs> which I've never eaten. <laughs> no. Um, but but fortunately, we've been broken in on the west coast, and so uh, enjoyed. Um, salmon and and sushi and then beginning crab and I've had some lobster but I know the cuisine the, the seafood cuisine when you move to the other coast is is uh, is different so I, I don't know if I can fully answer the question <laughs> do you like seafood? I like the salmon well, um, how long have you Um, I was uh, associate for four, just over four years um, there, and then prior to that, I was doing my my master's degree. So we were doing a, lot, a bunch of lay minister work while I was going to school, um, and so we, well, I graduated uh, Bible college in two thousand and six, and we went to Big Valley in oh seven, oh beginning of oh eight. So yeah, so been in in ministry either vocationally or lay ministry since 2008. So eight years. Yeah. Um, I when I graduated college I went with my one of my professors to to teach at a at a seminary in Ukraine but that's been the extent of my missionary uh, trips uh, I worked with mustard seed in Calgary and then I also um, I was supposed to go to Brazil but um, uh, a week before we left uh, our trip was cancelled and uh, we went to Germany instead and uh, so that's where my missions extension went. No. You play guitar. <laughs> I, I own a guitar. I don't play a guitar. <laughs> uh, I, I like music a lot. I, um, I play the harp now. Um, I have a flute that I play with the boys a little bit, and then I grew up with piano. Yeah, um, I, I'd say teaching, um, particularly kind of as I referenced before, being able to, to teach directly to people. Um, some, sometimes that gift is called individualization, so the ability to read people and to, to help them directly, but uh, in terms of the, 
the biblical outline gifts, I'd say teaching. And I would say either helps or hospitality for me. I like to have people over a lot and um, whether it's just dinner and dessert or just coffee in the afternoon, I really like to have people. And games. We love games. We might have said that already. Oh, I, I used to be competitive, and then um, one Christmas uh, we were playing Ticket to Ride with Natasha's parents, and I saw her, her mother completing a route that I needed, so I put one my trains in there, and, and she cried a little bit, and I stopped being competitive then. Um, yeah, I think anytime you step into a new role, you want to be successful and uh, you always define success in a different way. And when it comes to ministry, um, that can be really difficult uh, because uh, obviously your, your work um, directly relates to, to the kingdom. And so of course you want to be successful because you want, you want God to be successful. And, and, but there's a way that you approach that that's, uh, that's very um, unhealthy. So um, I'd say kind of the, the two sides of that, the, the fear would be one, just not being successful. And the, the second one is making success uh, what, um, what drives my ministry and drives my involvement, which is... Um, which is not helpful ultimately to the kingdom or to the church. Not yet. <laughs> we have Ontario friends. We have the Cowlings and then. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of in the middle. <laughs> I've always wanted to see the East Coast. My dad went to school at Yale, so on the East Coast of the States, and I've always wanted to, to go. Oh, yeah. So we have friends from the East Coast that might move back, but they're on the West Coast right now. Um, for me, it's definitely growth in, in people. And um, my greatest joys in ministry have been seeing people to, uh, to step up and be involved in what God is calling them to. And that will look different for each person. Um, but, but that's, yeah, that's where I get a lot of my excitement to drive ministry. And that's what I define as, as success. Uh, it, in in person or through? Okay, so um, I, I I talk a lot. Both of my brother-in-laws are in ministry, um, uh, geographically distant from me. One headquartered in in Edmonton and one in North Africa. Um, but when I meet up with them, I, we I kind of I gain a lot uh, from them. And then we um, there's there's two guys that work in the the ministry center of of the denomination that we're, we're involved in on the West Coast that, um, that I've really kind of been learning a lot from. And do you want me to just, oh, that was, did anyone do that or that was just me? Okay, sorry. I thought I, thought I wasn't talking close enough to the mic and someone was trying to turn up. Yeah, so the, um, that was two, two guys, um, David and Bruce out there that I've uh, learned a lot from. Um, I also, I read a lot, so there's kind of different authors uh, that I'd follow and speakers that I'd listen to. Um, like uh, I mentioned J.D. Greer, uh, Tim Keller, um, uh, Jeff Vanderstelt, who I know that some of you have had some some influence from. And so those are people, they don't know me, but I know them and, and learn from them as well. Um, 
as I, I mentioned, two two of my brother in laws are in in full time uh, ministry, and so obviously that's my sisters, and so my parents are, and I'm the youngest. I didn't I didn't tell that in my story. I'm the youngest of four, uh, so my parents are kind of used to um, just what being in in vocational ministry means, and uh, at least I'm not going as far away as my sister, who's in another continent. So, uh, so they're they're supportive. Yeah. Uh, and my parents. Uh, my dad's very supportive. He understands um, having to move for work um, or if you're, you're called somewhere. And um, he's been very supportive. He's like, you know, I've been praying if it's the right fit, but it's a clear, it's a clear uh, call for us. Um, yeah, we, I think we learned, we learned when we moved from Alberta, which was really all I knew to, to BC, that you can find beauty anywhere. And a lot of people think, well, the prairies are just bleak and cold and, and white, but I find a lot of beauty there, um, too. And so we kind of learned that, that there's, um, there's beauty and there's great things in every, in every place. I, I did expect it to be colder. I'm I'm a little surprised. This is definitely more been uh, Vancouver weather than than Edmonton weather. So, um, so that that was interesting. And the the vegetation is actually very similar to Alberta. I thought um, topography is a little different. No uh, oceans yet in Alberta, depending if you believe the. <laughs> um, but that yeah. So I've, I I think we've found a lot of very very neat spots already and as Natasha already mentioned one of her great recharging is being able to to walk in nature and seems like a lot of opportunity to do that even in the city a lot of kind of hidden pockets and things like that look she's like like ready to just race right off that stool <clears throat> one of the things one of the things that we learned about Natasha is she doesn't really like the spotlight. And if I had been able to get a hold of a spotlight, I would have put it on her tonight just to, just to intensify it a bit. But you guys did really good. Thank you. And uh, we appreciate the insights. Be, be, before you slide off the stool, let's at least pray for, for them. Um, we, tomorrow morning, Kyle's going to preach. And then um, you'll have a chance before and after the service to talk to them one-on-one -on -one or... Um, I guess this evening now what we're going to do is we're going to let them go back with the laid laws back to their place and we'll just open it up for a few minutes if people have questions for the board on what we're doing and where we, you know, just whatever questions you might have before we end tonight. But before you go, let's, uh, let's, let's pray for these two and just ask for God's wisdom for them and for us and for his blessing upon them. Father, we're so grateful that we could be here tonight, and uh, it's, it's always exciting to hear people's stories, their journeys with you. Um, <clears throat> it's even interesting and exciting for all of us to see how we've even gotten to this place where we have a, a need as a church, and they have um, a need for the next step in their ministry. And so we just ask, Father, that you would give uh, Kyle and, and Natasha wisdom as they come through this weekend to see and hear your voice and your leading clearly, that you would give us as a church uh, wisdom as to the step that you want us to take as a church. And if it is meant for you, if it is part of your will, if it's meant that we would be knit together as, as a family, that they would become, uh, for lack of better terms, missionaries to the East Coast, that um, we just place our lives, we place their lives in your hands, we place our church in your hands. You said you would build, build your church, and um, we've seen that happen over the last 10, 11 years, and we know that you've taken us through every step of the way you lead. And so we just ask that you would lead in this, that you would lead them as a couple, and that you would pour out your blessings on their marriage and on their family. And we ask this because we trust you and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. What we'll do is we'll just take a five-minute break. You can do a washroom break and um, maybe...